Hello, I'm Andrew Collier. Welcome to International Gas Detectors. Today, we're really excited to present to you our two-wire addressable gas detection systems. These systems are going to offer you some real advantages out in the field, so I hope by the end of this video presentation you'll be as excited about them as we are. So what we want to talk to you about today is our uh, new two-wire addressable gas detection systems. Uh, we had a long, long look at what we were going to do to move uh, addressable gas detection system on from where we've been. We've been uh, producing addressable gas detection now for about 15 years. And I think the kit that we've got is pretty much cutting edge and market leading. But to keep this moving forward and staying ahead and to give people some added benefits from two wire addressable stuff, we looked at what we could do here with the systems that we got. Could we go Wi-Fi? Well, we didn't think so because uh, a lot of our detectors are power hungry, so battery life's a real issue with that kind of stuff. Uh, these are life safety systems, so when we reviewed that, we decided that um, whilst nobody likes installing cables, cables are probably a necessary evil, so we're kind of stuck with those. So we sort of looked at, well, what do we do there? Um, we've got to have cables. What's the minimum we can get away with? So that's where two-wire addressable systems come from. Um, so the idea here is that we only need a two-core cable to transmit power and communications at the same time. So you can install your two-wire cable, put in loops in where the detectors are going to go, detector nodes, fit a control panel, and then fit detectors or de sampling detectors, uh, safe area gas detectors, exactly where you need those to be. And then the really neat part about this, each one of these detector node points has IO capability. So if you need to fit a slam switch, pick the nearest point and connect to that. Use the interfaces that we've provided you with the on the new detector types. Need a beacon sounder, connect that to the nearest detector. Don't need to put lots of additional cabling in for that. So that's what's really different about that. Each one of these detection node points and that's why we've started calling them detector nodes, gives you some additional I.O. capability. So looking at the controller end of things, we've given you two versions of controllers. Uh, one is a full color touchscreen uh, HMI input device. So that's a really nice color display, touchscreen, really nice interface. Uh, second one is a 2x8 uh, LCD display with a jog wheel input, uh, and that's an RGB uh, display so this is uh, will be red if it's an alarm it'll be green if it's happy uh, it'll be flashing yellow if it's uh, system fault so you'll still get the same kind of information on there uh, but not quite as uh, nice a format as the full color HMI uh, but it depends whether uh, which pocket this fits uh, the size of the system as to what sort of complexity you want from the display uh, and actually the LCD display the smaller display version actually gives you a little bit more security uh, it's not quite as visual um, and it's much, much more difficult for people to go in and start playing with stuff there. You've got lockout capability on both panels if you want to do that. So if you want to stop people uh, being able to do anything on the system once it's all been set up and configured, you can do that too. You can have lockouts for that. System itself, uh, both displays, display types use an internal hook card. So that's what we're showing you here. And one of the really neat things here with the system is that actually both displays can be connected at the same time. So this would allow you, for instance, to have in a, in a, in a plant room area or something, you could have the simpler display type, or maybe you're, you want to display uh, by a laboratory door, or you want it by the boiler room door, something like that. But you want to see what's happening remotely somewhere else as well. So you could have the smaller display local to the system, and you could use the color touchscreen up to a kilometer away somewhere else. So really, really easy to have remote displays or mimic panels as we used to call them in the past. Very straightforward to do that kind of thing. And that display link can be up to a kilometer. So uh, again, lots of capability there. You could be a kilometer away from wherever the, the actual system is, buried away in a plant area or something, uh, and the display can be showing you up in reception exactly what's going on down there. Very neat. As we mentioned, this is a two-wire gas detection system, so you only need a two-core cable to connect all of your devices. And that's polarity independent is the key critical thing here. Uh, one of the things we uh, looked at is how do we make this simpler, more efficient, faster to install? Well, if the cabling's not polarity dependent, if it doesn't matter which way round you connect these two cores, 
then that's much much faster to install you don't have to think about it you can just put that in terminate it away you go doesn't matter how you cross this thing over the system sorts that out completely polarity independent really really neat any mix of uh, flammable oxygen or toxic gas detectors, either safe area units or ATEX units, whichever ones you need for the, the area classification that you've got. And you can have up to 32 of those devices uh, on each one of the cable highways that's available on the controller. The hub card itself, uh, lots of features on here. Uh, we've got some built-in relays on the card itself. So there's a dedicated fault relay, uh, three alarm relays, uh, you've got direct digital input for e-stops, slam switches, brake glasses, or uh, relay interfaces to fire panels, other controllers. Uh, so these are, these are closed loop interfaces, open up to send them into alarm. You've got a beacon sounder output there directly to control off the panel. On a 750, on the bigger touchscreen panel, you've got four of these two-wire, what we call highway ports, for connecting your detectors to. Each one of those supports 32 devices. On the smaller panel, on the 650, you've only got two ports available there. You've got onboard battery backup control. So we can fit either 1.2 ampere hour batteries, uh, 2.4 or 5 ampere hour batteries into the panel itself uh, for onboard battery backup. Uh, there's a range of external battery backups as, as well for this system. So if you need bigger than that, we can go up to 17 ampere hours externally. Uh, but that's on board and you can see that through the displays so again you can see the battery status and exactly what's happening with that the larger 750 panel uh, that's got a Bluetooth interface on it so that allows us and we'll see in a few minutes uh, to have uh, Android connectivity so you've got lots of service tools now that we can make available on the Android platform um, 750s have Ethernet as well uh, the 650 doesn't They've both got USB, so if you can't connect over Bluetooth for whatever reason, or you don't want to, you want to use the laptop, then you can do that through the USB port. You've got a remote RS-485 port, um, so that you could use to connect to uh, remote systems, BMS, DCS systems. Uh, that panel has a Modbus interface built into it, so you can control the complete control panel over that. You can get lots of data back from that digitally. You've got a HMI port for the big color touchscreen. There's a ribbon cable connector for the smaller LCD display. So a feature rich panel, plenty of interfaces there to go at, lots of stuff to play with. So if I've got my uh, controller and I've maybe got two displays connected to that, I can also uh, cascade that down to another control panel. So the master panel at the top will see everything that's connected to the control panel below it and I could cascade that down another level to another control panel. Now each one of these cascaded links could be up to a kilometer long. So if I've got the two cascaded panels and I've got a remote display, then I could be up to three kilometers to distribute this across a network. And of course I've got all my devices connected as well. So distributing across a network, if you've got a whole uh, host of little process areas or laboratory complexes, plant rooms, anything like that, uh, allows you now to have some detectors connected to the master panel. I can then cascade down to uh, either displays here that have got uh, hub cards that you're going to use to cascade down another level, or these could just be hub cards that are in field boxes out, out in the field on DIN rail bases. So they don't necessarily have to be complete control panels. And I can cascade down underneath those uh, to another four panels. Each one of those with 32 devices on each of its cable highways, either three or four port, th sorry, two, three or four ports available there, uh, which would allow me to have up to nine controllers and 350 channels. Now, bearing in mind that each one of those channels can also have seven, seven other interfaces connected to it with the I.O. possibilities that you've got on the detector nodes, and now you've got a, a really feature-rich network with lots and lots of I.O. capability. Uh, we mentioned that we've got some relay uh, and digital inputs on the main panels themselves. Uh, usually you're going to want to control some other things, whether it's beacon sounders, connections to other systems, uh, solenoid valves, whatever it happens to be. So we produce uh, an eight-way two-wire relay card. This can be anywhere on the network. So you can put this on the same cable run that you've got the detectors on. So this minimizes cabling again. It allows you to distribute the logic 
where you need that to be. Uh, rather than wiring everything back to a control panel now, you can distribute this uh, in a much more modern and efficient way around your system. And of course, we've still got enunciator modules. Now, lots of you will have seen those on the four-wire systems. Um, those are typically used for things like door entry control or status control inside a, a smaller area. Um, again, 2x8 uh, RGB display on there. That will colour change depending on whether it's an alarm, whether it's happy to enter. The messages on the front can be programmed and they will appear to be OK to enter or I'm in alarm, gas alarm, whatever you need that to be. And you can have slam switch inputs on those. Uh, you can have sounder outputs, uh, all that kind of stuff to make uh, the, the job of door entry control and uh, the status of an area much, much more easy uh, to achieve. Uh, we mentioned Android apps. Uh, the larger panels have an Android interface and all of the panels, either via USB or the detectors by a cable input, allow you to connect to Android devices. So this could be an Android mobile phone, it could be an Android tablet, doesn't matter what the platform is. Um, and that allows us now you can interrogate the system, you can configure devices, you can go off and do calibrations, you can do some diagnostic stuff, you can download event logs, all using your Android device. So really, really modern approach to how you're going to connect and how you're going to leverage data out of that, how you're going to control it and what you're going to do, uh, set up commissioning on site, normal operation, all sorts of stuff we can do with that. Lots of apps that you can do. And the really neat thing about this is that being Android, of course, if we make changes to it, then that gets automatically pushed down to all devices that have downloaded those apps. So we can keep everybody up to date with the very latest state of that software uh, without having to tell you that there's a change and you've got to go off and reload something. This will do it automatically. So that's really, really neat. Uh, again, modern, efficient. Um, do it straight off your mobile phone. So we're talking about detectors now, or detector nodes as we started calling them, because each one of these detectors now has multi-IO capability. So if I've installed the detector and I want to add an additional device, perhaps a secondary detector, uh, perhaps I want to use a relay output on there to control a solenoid valve or an interface to a fire alarm panel, uh, maybe I want to add some inputs in the form of slam switches or brake glasses, I want to add a beacon sounder, I can do all of those on the detector node. You've got seven options there on the detector node to add that kind of capability. So these are really, really flexible. Uh, you can literally now put your cable highway loop in and you can decide afterwards, well, how am I going to connect my beacon sounder? Well, I just connect it to the nearest detector node. How am I going to connect my relay? I'll do it to the nearest detector node. It's a nice and efficient way of doing it. The same is true of the enunciators. If you've got those on the site, then you've got options, as we said, for e-stops on those, key switches. Uh, you've got an RGB display on there. You can program the text to appear. So you can use this, as we said, very, very commonly. Door entry control or as like, like an intelligent beacon sounder in a small room complex. Um, and onto that again, we could add uh, a flammable gas detector. We could use the relay output that's on there to control something. Uh, you could configure the I.O. points to be 4 to 20 milliamp inputs, analog inputs, so you can control another device through that. Um, you've got the option for pulse counting, so you can uh, do things like totalizing gas meter readings, that kind of thing. You can add a secondary detector on there. So you could actually have two gas detectors connected off one uh, door entry node. Here we're showing you the PCB that's inside there. So you can see that we've got a Pelister interface directly there. Two multifunction ports. One of these we're showing has got a 4 to 20 connected. One we've got a pulse count where we're doing totalizing off a gas meter with it. Um, but those two interface points can be inputs, they can be outputs, they can be configured to be uh, exactly what you need them to be. And you can do that with the Android apps on the unit itself. You've got a relay output on there as well. Uh, so you could use that, uh, as we're doing here, to control a solenoid valve or something. And you've got a toxic gas or an oxygen detector that you could plug onto the unit as well. So feature rich, lots and lots of IO points. A uh, real big feature of this system are the detector nodes. There's lots and lots of things that we can do with those. Make uh, control of a system very straightforward. So you're not in a situation anymore where you're on site and somebody turns up and says, uh, very commonly, you know, a consultant says, we need another beacon sounder in this area. And now you're thinking, well, I've got to run a cable back to the control panel, or I've got to buy another IO point or something to do that. With this system, that's not an issue. Which is your nearest detector node? Just simply wire it to that and configure it on the system. Very, very powerful. 
Inputs don't necessarily have to be gas detectors. As, as we mentioned, the multifunction ports that are there can be analog inputs, typically 4 to 20 milliamp inputs. Uh, and they can be current source or sync, so we can do that. Um, here we're showing uh, something like a flame detector, and we've got a temperature probe. Both of those have got 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. We can input those to a detector node, tell the node what it is. It's a temperature, it's a flame detector. And then on the control panel, just set alarms against those items as you would any other gas detector. So really flexible again, you can add other devices. They don't have to be gas detectors. So this gives you a flavor of it. Each one of those 32 devices that we can put on a cable highway can have up to uh, seven IO points on it. Uh, very, very flexible. It's only two core cabling. So this absolutely minimizes to the bare minimum, the amount of cable that you've got to fit with the system. Uh, much, much better integration with other systems. As we say, you've got uh, Bluetooth on there, uh, you've got an Ethernet port on there. Um, we, we plan, uh, at the moment you've got uh, Modbus as an interface to the panels. Uh, during the summer we uh, will update that so you've also got BACnet on board for building integration. Uh, and later on, probably next year, we'll add other interfaces uh, as we get asked for them. So things like Profibus may well become available as well. So integration to other systems, much, much better with this. Your calibration is uh, stored on the detector heads. So uh, swapping or exchanging a detector head is easy. You can just take the front off, plug in a different detector on, uh, tell the system that uh, instead of it being a CO detector, uh, now you've got an oxygen in that location and, and reconfigure the alarms, away you go. You don't have to recable everything, just particularly for lab, lab complexes where uh, maybe the gas types they're using change. This is a really big feature. So you can have a set of detectors that they just deploy in a lab area uh, exactly the way you want them to be. System backup, you've got options for that. So uh, we will record on the system things like uh, the uh, as installed backup of the system. So if something gets changed, you can always restore the backup again, nice and straightforward. Uh, you can do all of the panel interfaces and, and system setups and things through your Android devices, download event logs, you can see all of that. Um, lots and lots of connectivity. You can connect bigger HMI displays. We can provide those, uh, lots of Android apps. We absolutely minimize, as well as the cabling here, the, the object of the exercise with the Android apps is that this minimizes site paperwork. So this is another big headache of filling in, you know, triplicate pads and all of that. This consigns that to the dustbin. So. If you're going around doing calibrations, then your Android apps let you do that. Uh, you can download uh, data from the system, things like sensor check, event logs, status logs and things. So you can prove the status of calibration. You can take that away with your Android device. Since it is an Android device, uh, you've probably got access there to email. So you can email that straight off the device. Uh, no need for the paperwork stuff anymore. And this will get developed further and further and further with more and more connectivity as we go along. So you've already got all of the stuff as we launch this uh, to do all of the things you're going to want to do as a site engineer, as a commissioning engineer, or as an operator. Um, but these will get enhanced as we go along and as people ask for more and more things. Nice and nice and straightforward. So we really do view this as taking gas detection panels out of the dark ages. We used to say it with the old addressable systems, but this moves it on a stage further. Uh, easily configured, enhanced safety, you can leverage lots of stuff out of this system. Uh, so it's a benefit to installers, it's a benefit to operators, it's a benefit all round. So I really hope that was of interest. Uh, this is just a, a flavour of uh, what we can do with two wire systems and what they're all about. Um, we plan to do much more of these video clips to show you um, how to operate systems. So uh, there'll be lots of how-to videos coming forward. Uh, with what you can do and can't do with the systems, how to install them, how to calibrate, uh, how to record data off it, how to use your Android apps. Uh, all of those kind of things are coming now in a whole series of videos that we're going to produce for that. So uh, hopefully that was a flavour of the whole thing. Uh, hopefully that was of interest. Uh, and we look forward to hearing you. Thank you very much for listening.